<laughs> Hi everyone, Let It Linger here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new HMLTD record, The Worm. This is a brand new LP from London Art, Pop, and Rock, as well as post-punk outfit, HMLTD, their sophomore release that I had pretty high hopes for. Not only because I loved their show-stopping debut, West of Eden, which I think is one of the most tragically underrated records of 2020, but also because they've shown themselves to be one of the most creative and versatile up-and-coming bands out there today. A band that has something to say in their music, too, as a lot of cuts from their first full-length projected a view that inequity and bigotry are pretty much destroying Western civilization, and of course that message continues on onto the worm. Except this time it's highly conceptualized and is set to the most extravagant instrumentation we've heard from HMLTD so far. Now, hatred, ignorance, and a host of other things are represented by the worm, which is consuming England, consuming all of us, which it's said to be at one point. And this is an idea the band explores pretty heavily on multiple tracks here, be it uh, Wormlands, The End Is Now, Saddest Worm Ever, as well as the title track. They're really giving this narrative object they've drummed up here multiple angles. And it's an ambitious look, but I think that look only runs skin deep. Because this new metaphorical framing doesn't really offer any uh, revelations on views that weren't already put boldly before on previous tracks like Blank Slate, War is Looming, The West is Dead, and I wouldn't say the unveil of what the worm represents in the second half of the record is all that intriguing, plus I'm not really impressed with the musical direction the band took things in on the worm either, as I think the instrumentals on this record are sounding surprisingly derivative and even pulling from a shrinking pool of influences. And the genuine sense of drama I got from many tracks off their last record has mostly been replaced by uh, this kind of off-Broadway camp with some pretty unflattering results. To start things off and put it bluntly with the song Wormlands, I think this one kind of sounds like a very subpar jazz rock cut, which honestly sounds like a pale imitation of a black midi song, topped with these oddly monotone and shaky lead vocals that have kind of a nasal inflection to them. They don't really bring any sense of urgency, and in my opinion, they're a bit annoying to listen to. The song structure operates in a few different parts as well, none of which head in all that interesting of a direction, in my opinion. The end is now is a much more solid tune overall, but mostly comes across like taking glam rock anthemics and elevating them with rock operatics. And while I'm not frothing at the mouth for this track, it probably is the best and most entertaining example of this combination working on the record. However, I'm pretty dismayed to hear the following track, Days, which at points literally sounds like a less interesting version of the song Daydreaming from Radiohead's Moonshaped Pool. The deja vu is a bit too distracting for uh, the vast majority of the song, and while it does come to a crescendo point toward the end, it doesn't exactly head anywhere gripping or uh, all that gratifying. And and as if that wasn't enough Radiohead worship, the following track uh, makes a really weak attempt at just putting a spin on the linear grooves and guitar lines from In Rainbows, while employing the same weak vocal leads that made Wormland so drab to listen to. Liverpool Street is a change of pace in that it's a super lush piece of chamber pop with some really melodramatic lead vocals backed by some operatic singing and pumping strings. However, I didn't find there to be a lot of momentum or connection uh, bringing us from the spoken word passages to instrumental swells. All these fragmented bits make the project feel like it's consumed in the theatrics of its concept more than it is uh, the worm that this whole thing is about. There's also the title track, which sounds like an overblown pop crossover from an original cast soundtrack. I couldn't imagine a more unearned apex at this point on the record, really firing on all cylinders as if every single thing happening up until this point had just gone off without a hitch. Like, I close my eyes listening to this and all I can see is bad costume design and maybe a giant paper mache worm being dragged from one side of the stage to the other. The record's final moments aren't the lowest points on the album, but I will say much of their appeal is kind of couched in the concept uh, working or appealing to the listener. I will say the closing track is a bit of a head scratcher though, because it, it kind of sounds like a very radio friendly and flowery piece of piano rock that I would expect more from like a 21 Pilots record, not so much this. But yeah, I'm really at a loss with this record, not 
very into it, unfortunately, despite it being one of my most anticipated albums of this year and, uh, you know, uh, really enjoying much of this group's output uh, up until this point. From their early singles to their EP stuff to the debut, I respect there's a concept at play here, for sure. A lot of grand vocal arrangements and orchestral bits that no doubt took a lot of focus and effort to put together, but the foundation all of it sits on, in my opinion, is still pretty weak, and the band's not exactly bringing their strongest crop of songs or performances either. I'm feeling a decent too strong four on this one. Tran. Zition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, HMLTD, a forever.